Welcome to Basic Brewing Video. I'm James Spencer. And I'm Steve Wilkes. It's May, and we're going to talk about Maybach. Is that a Ubach? That's a Maybach. It's a Maybach. <laughs> <laughs> We've set that joke up for months. Yeah, I brewed this beer specifically <laughs> right. for that joke. That's just how sad our lives are. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> but Maybach is a lager, and uh, every year uh, during the wintertime, I try to brew a lager. And I usually uh, ferment in the basement because it's uh, uh, lager fermenting temperatures. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We've been into the beer already. Yes, and so. <laughs> need to make sure the glasses worked. That's right. But the but the uh, basement was a little warmer this year, so I did the uh, primary fermentation in my kegerator with a, uh, a little electronic controller. So what is what is the optimum lagering temperature? Well, uh, is it beer specific? Uh, well, my 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 preference is uh, around in the lower fifties Fahrenheit. Yeah, fifty degrees Fahrenheit would be what ten degrees Celsius, something like that. But we'll get into the details of that when okay. we talk about the recipe. But let's let's sample the beer. Let's have some beer for the first time. <laughs> 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 let's see if they got the carbonation right this time. It's it's well shoot. There it goes. <laughs> Drink that quick! I'm I'm naming this beer Old Faithful. <laughs> I, I named got, it Marianne I, Faithful, but uh, I've got one of those um, one of those uh, CO2 cartridge things on there, and I I just can't uh, I can't get it right. So anyway, while I'm talking about the beer, that maybe the head will uh, settle down a bit. It's got great head retention, <laughs> which is one of the one of the character one of the characteristics of the style. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> two hours later. <laughs> anyway. anyway, okay. Uh, so for this Maybach, I uh, drew inspiration uh, for the recipe from uh, Chris Colby's article on beerandwinejournal.com. Actually, he, he did a series of articles on Maybach on beerandwinejournal.com. So go to that website, which is a great website, mm -hmm. chock full of information. Chock full. And uh, check that out. But here is my recipe. I had uh, 7 pounds or 3.2 kilograms of German pills, 4 pounds or 1.8 kilograms of Vienna, and 1 pound or 450 grams of Munich malt. And uh, I uh, did a batch sparge on that. And uh, in the kettle, I had 21 grams or a little less than an ounce of Magnum uh, hops for 60 minutes hmm. and 28 grams or an ounce of Tetanang yeah. Uh, at flame out, and then I uh, I chilled down the wort uh, initially with a with, ju with just a uh, uh, a wort chiller, a standard uh, immersion wort chiller, and then I used a, a res recirculating pump system with a pond pump and ice water to uh, bring the wort down to pitching temperature, which was around 52 degrees Fahrenheit or 11 C. And into that, I pitched uh, three packages of rehydrated Saf Lager S23 yeast. Uh, and I, what I did was I boiled a, a bit of water mm -hmm. uh, and then chilled it down to, uh, uh, to pitching temperature, essentially, and then put the yeast packets in there and, and swirled it around and hydrated those. Pitched that in, shook it like everything to aerate, and then put it in the... It's, a, it's more about the fermentation than anything else on, on these things, yeah. on the lagers. So no need to make a starter. Right. Well, with the dry yeast, no. Right. Okay. So I used three packets. Okay. Uh, I, I brewed on February 12th and pitched the yeast, obviously, at that point. Mm -hmm. uh, ten days later, uh, when the fermentation started to slow, uh, I brought it out, brought it up to room temperature and did a diacetyl rest to hopefully get rid of the, the buttery characteristics. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, I put it, uh, about a week later, I put it back, or, or I racked it to the secondary and then put it into the kegerator again and slowly ramped the temperature down to start lagering. Uh, yep. And then I lagered below 40 degrees Fahrenheit, which is around, what, 36 degrees Fahrenheit would be around two degrees Celsius. <clears throat> and then I, uh, about a month later, I kegged it, and then here we are almost two months after that, mm -hmm. and the keg has been, you know, in the kegerator 
uh, chilling that whole time. So and today's the first day that it's been tapped, is that? Well, I've tasted along the way. You have tasted a, along the way. But just, but just teeny just tastes. <laughs> As you can, you can pick up this thing. It's still almost got five gallons in there. I'm not going to pick that up. <laughs> but this is the beer. Now the head, you know, that I've been talking yeah. this all time, the head has settled down a bit. And cheers, by the way. Cheers. Mm. Oh. Well, you know, there's just, there's just something about a lager beer. Mm -hmm. There's a reason why they're the most popular beer in the world. Well, marketing too, but <laughs> but <laughs> but this is a rare, maybe not rare, but uh, this is a time when I adhered to the Reinheitsge vote. Yeah, you know, there's nothing in the process I don't think uh, that would stray away from that that 1500s law. Right. But uh, this is a little a little lighter in gravity than uh, than the BJCP definition of Maybach, but that's okay. You yeah. Know? Well, I, I mean, I like it because it's not fancy. You know, there's just, there's no cacao nibs, there's no chicken nuts, there's no, <laughs> you know, there's no ancho chilies that have been soaked in tequila, there's no, you know, I mean, I like all that stuff, I do right. all that stuff, right. but, well, maybe not the chicken nuts, but, <laughs> but. Which is one of the better beers we've ever had actually, at a homebrew yes. competition, or a homebrew uh, You know, there's conference. no acacia berries, it's just. <laughs> It's just four things. It's traditional. Yes. I, and I really like it. Well, it's, it, it is, um, I think it's very malty, but there's enough bitterness there to mm -hmm. support that. I was interested that you use Magnum as your bittering hop, mm -hmm. and I'm going to assume that's because Magnum just doesn't really impart anything but bittering. It doesn't, doesn't well, I mean, uh, if you're gonna, if you're characterize gonna, the beer. If you're going to boil for 60 minutes... Uh, you know, it's going to strip most of the aroma and right. flavor characteristics anyway. So the Magnum uh, hit the uh, level of bitterness that I was shooting for. And if you're going to lager something for several months, a lot of that bitterness is going to fade over time. Right. So, and I, I don't think this is overly bitter for the style no. at oh, all. Oh, no. It's, this, is, this is great. Um, mm. Multi, well-balanced. Uh, to me, it's not about hops. I don't get a, you know, but I'm so used to those West Coast right. hop bombs that right. now anything that's not, you know, knocking me down with hops is like, oh, it's not about the hops, <laughs> you know. But if you think about it, there is a little bit of the spicy character of the Tetang mm -hmm. hop in there. Um, mm, it's just, but it's it's just so clean and and. Uh, I wouldn't call it crisp because it's got a substantial amount of body there. Yeah. Um, but really, yeah, it's easy really drinking. luscious. I'd, I'd say it's luscious rather than crisp. And wh what would you, I mean, tell me a pitfall. So what should I avoid if I'm going to do this? What's, you know, tell me the thing I should not do. Well, the diacetyl rest, I mean, if you're going to do a lager, uh, the diacetyl rest or letting it ferment for long enough for the yeast to take care of the buttery, buttery characteristics uh, to, you know, to get rid of that flaw. That to me is the most important. I mean, I'm not a, an expert in, in, in brewing lots of lagers. Right. Um, although we do have a, a DVD on that that's quite uh, good. <laughs> <laughs> but I have tasted bad lagers. Yeah. And the thing that is bad about them is that they are buttery. I mean, you crack them open and it's like butterscotch. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's a it's a buttery butterscotch, buttered popcorn kind of uh, flavor, and that just destroys it. I mean, that it's it's a flaw that to me, at least my palate. Some people are less sensitive to that, but to my palate, just I, like I can it. detect the least little bit. I enjoy it on buttered popcorn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Especially at the movies. Uh, you know, when you have help yourself butter, I like a lot of it. But in a lager uh, like this, it's, it, it, uh, it doesn't belong. So take care of the fermentation. Take your time. Mm -hmm. Do a diacetyl rest. Let the temperature come up. Uh, let the yeast finish so, off. Do the primary work of the fermentation yeah. uh, cold so that you don't get like fruity esters and such that mm -hmm. are more appropriate for an ale. But then at the end of it, ramp up the temperature, let the, let the uh, yeast 
uh, take care of those buttery flavors. So when you say ramp up, I mean, you're not talking about ramping up like a farmhouse ale, talk 80 degrees. No, 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 no. I'm talking room temperature in the, in the, in the winter time, which is like what, 68 degrees, maybe. Yeah. Uh, Fahrenheit, I don't know what yeah. that is. In, uh, Mr. Jimmy Texas. Carter, that's 55, wear a sweater. <laughs> so, <laughs> that would be a malaise, my box. <laughs> that's right. But so, what do you got? What do you got to eat here? Well, you know Steve? what? When when you talked about the Maybach, and I thought we got a little something to eat with it, but I didn't have time to cook anything because mm. you know I'm a busy man. Mm -hmm. You have places to go, people to see, things to do, things to do. So I read about what's the what are the great pairings. Just did a little research and carrot cake, and we just so happened to have a wonderful French bakery just down the street called uh, Briar Rose, Be and between our houses, between our houses. And this is this is their carrot cake. It's really really good carrot cake, and I think it will pair beautifully with this Maybach. Mm. Wow. Mm. Wow. Oh my God. <laughs> I just went into a diabetic coma. <laughs> Can you feel your toes? No. <laughs> Either that, or I just counted to ten. Wow, that's really good. And it's a good pairing. It's good. Oh, yeah, it's perfect. Mm. Yeah, they always say uh, it drink, cuts the. Uh, they always say drink hoppy beers with carrot cake to cut the fat and the. But yeah, <clears throat> this does it as well. I must do this again on camera. I don't care who sees me. Or who complains in the comments about smacking. <laughs> One of these days we're going to do a taffy episode, <laughs> just for all you smacking complainers. <laughs> all right, what else? Do a lager. Mm. Uh, if you've got refrigeration, you can do it in the summertime. Yeah, uh, it's easier to do in the wintertime to chill down. But but lo but lagers, uh, they take a lot more patience. Uh, they take a lot more attention to detail in the fermentation process. But man. They're well worth the effort. Who does it pay off? And remember that desserts and beer go very well together. Yes. Everybody wants to pair beer with barbecue, which is not a bad thing. But remember, you know, piece of cake, piece of pie, life's good. Yes. Yes. <laughs> More mead <laughs> or lager. Cheers, everybody. Happy brewing. Happy brewing. Come and visit us on the web. At basicbrewing.com, you can find archive lists of both our audio and video podcasts on home brewing. You can also find our DVDs, extract brewing and partial mashing, stepping into all grain, low-tech lagering and decoction mashing, introduction to wine kits, and our Basic Brewing Brewer's Logbook, where you can track and log up to 50 batches of beer. Drop us a line. We'd love to hear from you. Write to James at basicbrewing.com, Steve at basicbrewing.com, or just use the contact form on basicbrewing.com. Oh! 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 Well, it has good head retention. <laughs> Take two!